Hi and welcome to this decision making section of the UCAT exam. This is of course like all of the first videos of a section going to serve as an overview of that whole section to give you an idea of what's to come, the section breakdown and the format as well as some key tactics. So as always let's start with what UCAT say and how they describe this subtest. The decision making subtest assesses your ability to apply logic to reach a decision or conclusion, evaluate arguments and analyze statistical information. Doctors and dentists are often required to make decisions in situations situations that may be complex. This requires high level problem solving skills and the ability to assess and manage risk and deal with uncertainty. You can think of the decision making as the logical component of the UCAT. All the other sections deal with things like spatial, words, numbers, whereas this one is more like the logical reasoning section. The section therefore assesses the following three areas. The first is your ability to use logic to arrive at conclusions. The second is assessing your ability to analyze different types of data. So you'll be presented with data in lots of different formats, some that you may have seen in the previous sections, such as graphs, tables, charts, etc. So the data might be presented in kind of abstract ways that you're not used to. So just be prepared for that and make sure that you don't get thrown when you see it. If you can mentally prepare for it now, it means that you won't be phased when it comes to exam day. The decision making section probably is the most wide ranging and diverse section that you'll face in all of the UCAT. Even still, the combination of questions kind of fall into six categories, which we're going to come on to discuss later. But we'll round off with the third and final way that they assess you, which is your ability to evaluate arguments. Because ultimately, what this section is doing is making you use the different data presented to you to make correct inferences. So therefore, it's drawing on a combination of skills from many of the different sections. And it's the combination of these skills that leads to the advanced and complex problem solving that the decision making is testing. And because of that reason, before you attempt the decision making section, I would highly recommend that you first have a look at the quantitative and the verbal reasoning sections, as a lot of the skills that are used here are taught in that module first. Let's take a moment to have a look at the format. The most distinguished thing about the decision-making section compared to the others is that instead of the others where you have one question stem followed by a number of questions, anything from three to four, maybe even five, here, the decision-making section is a one-to-one -one ratio. So one stem to one question. The way that the questions will go for the majority is that they will have one question followed by four options. However, one of the ways it varies is that you will have one question stem and then it will just literally be five yes or no questions to that stem. But this is definitely the minority of the question types in this section. And in total, this section has 29 questions. And these will be presented to you in different forms, such as charts, tables, graphs, and maybe even some abstract ways of presenting data. Timing wise, as always, you get one minute of reading time. And then after that, you get 31 minutes to complete the 29 questions. So that gives you around 64 seconds per question to answer. In this decision making section, you'll find that some types of questions are a lot quicker and easier to answer, whereas some of them take a little bit more time. For example, the assumption and conclusion type questions that we'll come on to look at in a minute, those are quite quick, whereas the puzzle type questions that we'll look at tend to take a little bit longer. So the tactic is to compensate for the time by going quickly on the quick ones, and of course, you might need to spend a little bit more time on the longer, more tricky ones. Now let's have a look at the types of questions that you're going to get. Before we dive into the exact type of questions that come up and how they present, one thing that I will say is that there are three areas that are particularly useful to know a lot about when answering these questions, and they're gonna help you be more accurate and speedy when answering them. And those three subject areas are basic arithmetic, probability and stats, and Venn diagrams. If you can practice those and get very good at them, then that will definitely make this section a lot more easy for you. So with regard to the questions, the decision making has three broad subject areas. And within each of the subject areas, there are two question types. They usually combine skills from both the quantitative and verbal reasoning, as we've already said. The first type of question that you'll get is evaluating arguments. And these make up about 35%, which is about 10 to 11 questions of the decision making. And within this subject area, the two types of questions that you'll get are recognizing assumptions and interpreting information slash drawing conclusions. However, sometimes you might find that within questions, there is a bit of overlap between these types. The second broad area comes under deductive reasoning. Now here, again, you'll get about 35% of the questions being of this type, which again is about 10 to 11 questions in the total section. And the two question types that you get in this area are logical puzzles and syllogisms. Now don't worry if you don't know what syllogisms mean. 
as we go on in the subsequent videos, we're gonna take each subject in turn and do a deep dive on how to answer the questions and exactly what each of them are. However, generally people who like puzzles tend to enjoy this section the most. And the final part is statistical and figural reasoning. Now this is about 30% of the section, which equates to about eight or nine questions. And this is where your knowledge of statistics and Venn diagrams is going to come in particularly useful because the two types of questions that you get in this are Venn diagrams and probabilistic and statistical statistical reasoning. And for these types of questions, the layout will be slightly different. So I'll show you on screen now how they typically look. Unlike the other sections where you might have the passage on one side to the left and then the four questions or the options to the right, these questions typically have the passage above then the questions beneath it. And when we get the yes, no questions, these are done via a drag and drop system. So let's round off this video for my tips on how to score highly. The most important thing for this is that you need to work smart. Now I know that seems like a very vague thing, but basically what it's saying is when you start and you're trying to work out what you need to know for the questions, it's important to actually know what you need to calculate rather than just diving straight in and doing lots of calculations. Because what it needs you to do is apply logic, solve problems, and use your reasoning skills to answer the questions. This is the section where you're most likely probably going to benefit from using your pen and your booklet. You might want to use it, for example, to schematically draw out some of the things that it's describing in words in the question, or if you're working out something that requires multiple steps and you want to kind of go from one to the other. And if you're using booklets, most of them have gone onto the kind of whiteboard that you can rub out, but if you're using paper, just make sure a quick exam tip is to ensure that you don't run out. So if you see that you're coming to the end of the pad, I know it's a very obvious thing to say, but you don't want to waste precious time waiting for someone to bring you another one. So as you're getting to the last few pages, make sure you put your hand up and ask the invigilator for one. The next tip is just to reiterate a point that we said earlier in the video. These subjects come up a lot. So probability, arithmetic, Venn diagrams, the more that you can practice these and know them well, it will increase your speed and accuracy throughout this section. Another thing that might help would be to do a little bit of reading around critical thinking, as that knowledge is gonna help you with the evaluating arguments questions that you're going to get in this section. One bit of good news if you're taking the BMAT is that this section is the one that most resembles the logical section. So if you are doing both, this will actually contribute quite nicely to the preparation for that exam as well. And my final and probably most important tip is when you read a question, just take a very brief brief moment to kind of take a step back and look at exactly what it is you need to know. And then once you've worked out what you actually need to know, only then do you dive in and work out the specific calculations that you need. It's very tempting to go straight in, dive in with the calculator and work out all these calculations. But in fact, you might find that after you've dived in and done all these calculations, you don't even really need to know some of the stuff that you've worked out and actually could have saved time by just applying the logic as they're testing and doing the very few bare minimum calculations that are required to give you the answer. So well done for getting to the end of this overview video. In the next lessons, we're going to be taking a deeper look at some of the very specific aspects of the decision making. And then as always, we're going to be getting you to have a go at some questions and then we'll go through some answers and highlight some theory areas that you need to remember. So well done and I will see you in the next video. Bye.